Today is my first experience with smart bulbs. And yes, I've been doing Home Assistant a long time and I am way behind on the smart bulb area. I'm gonna be playing with the Kauf, K-A-U-F bulb today to see how easy it is to include that in Home Assistant and then do a little automation demonstration and whatever else we feel like. So let's get started. This is the Kauf, K-A-U-F R-G-B-W-W-W Smart Bulb. It's made by Kaufman Home Automation. Uh, you can find more information at kafka.com or kafa.com. I mean, it's just a light bulb, right? There's not a lot to this. It's got five separate LED channels, uh, red, green, blue, cold, and white. It's got custom firmware based on ESP Home. And what's nice about this is this is designed to work in Home Assistant from the start. So they built it out to work with Home Assistant. You can also flash Tasmoda and other compatible firmware, other ESP compatible firmware. 85 to 265 volts, 50, 60 hertz, 10 watts maximum. It's got a, it's an A21 bulb with an E26 base. So your standard lamp type base. Your color temps are anywhere from 2700 to 6500 K. And it's only 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, indoor use only, of course. Uh, so again, some features, programmable ESP8266 Wi-Fi connection, warm and cold white LEDs, 100% local control. It is made using ESP Home, designed for Home Assistant, and compatible with Tasmoda. I couldn't uh, say that there was any better or any more out of the box designed light bulb than this one for home assistant use. So in the box, you get just a standard light bulb container. There's the actual light bulb. I mean, it's it's pretty big for a light bulb. If we take a mouse for comparison, which probably isn't a good one, the bulb itself is pretty, it's pretty big around compared to some of the other bulbs. What I find interesting in the box here, other than it's just an empty box, is the fact that this is a full uh, instruction set on how to get everything connected up into Home Assistant. And we're gonna go through that here in a few minutes, but it is designed from the bottom up to be used in Home Assistant and it goes through and tells you how to do that. We're, gonna, we're not gonna flash test mode on this. We're just gonna use the ESP Home setup here and we're just gonna put it into Home Assistant and then we'll play around with it a little bit. So let's go ahead and put the light bulb into the socket. I mean, it's just a standard socket. I'm just gonna roll this in here. Now, one thing I noticed here, so you, you can kind of see this uh, maybe, is how big this bulb is. I thought I would buy this little lamp and be able to use this bulb in the lamp. So it's supposed to function like a regular bulb. So when you turn it on, of course there's the washout for the camera, but when you turn it on, it's supposed to just turn on like a regular bulb. Okay, so let's turn it on. It says to wait uh, 10 to 30 seconds or whatever for that to uh, to show up on the Wi-Fi. I'm going to try to do this on my computer so we can see it on here. So let's just see what happens here. I'm going to look for my Wi-Fi access point or the Wi-Fi access point that it creates. And let's see, the directions here say that it will create a... Wi-Fi fallback hotspot calls um, cough bulb hotspot, and there it is. So I'm gonna connect to the cough bulb hotspot, and because I'm doing this on a laptop and not on something like a phone, I'm gonna need to go to the IP address that it says to go to, which is gonna be 192.168.4.1. And now it's asking me to set up and choose my Wi-Fi network that I'm gonna use for this. So we'll choose that. SSID and we will put in my hotspot or my Wi-Fi password and we're going to save it. And now we'll wait for a minute. So the, it says here the ESP is now trying to connect to the network. Give it some time. Just going step by step on the, uh, the directions here. And this lamp is washing me out. So let me just see if I can turn it a little ways. Still want to look at it, but maybe not my face. 
guess you couldn't even see that, right? So it's better for my face anyway. All right, so we're still uh, we're still waiting on this, and the next step is to uh, once you've connected the cuff smart bulbs fallback Wi-Fi hotspot, sign in so you configure your Wi-Fi. Then this, the cough bar, the, the bulb will restart itself and connect to the entered Wi-Fi network. All right, so the bulb just restarted. I don't think you saw that, but this bulb just, the bulb just flashed. So that means it restarted. I want to verify that the bulb is actually on the network before I, before I go to Home Assistant and see if it discovers it because I don't want to wait around if it's not actually working. And, and so I do see it here. It is on my network. Now, according to the directions on step number four, the cough smart bulb will restart itself and connect to the inter, uh, entered Wi-Fi network, which we just proved. Shortly thereafter, Home Assistant will detect the cough smart bulb and provide a notification. Okay, on the notifications panel, we do see we have new devices discovered. Let's see what we discovered. And now we do have the cough bulb. So let's configure that bulb. It asks if you want to add the ESP Home node to the Home Assistant, and I do. So we will go ahead and add it. Platform IO ESP01 Espressif. We'll just finish. All right, so now that bulb is added to ESP Home, one device and two entities. There's my bulb. So now what we can do is let's take a look at the bulb itself. So we can turn it on and off here. So now what we want to be able to do is control the color of the bulb. So let's see what our next step is according to our nice instruction set here. Actually, one of the things we want to do first is we do want to rename it because if we don't rename it, uh, then we're going to end up not knowing what it is. It's important that you keep names of your devices in here because you're if you have three cough bulbs, how are you going to know which one they are, right? So let's just rename it to um, office. So we're going to just call it Office Cough Bulb. Cough Bulb. And do I want to rename the entities? Yes, I do want to rename them. So I would have thought that I would have renamed those. Let's look at the entities here. I'm going to go back to uh, integrations. So configuration, integrations. And I see my list of devices here. Let me click this. Then here is my uh, rename option. So I was wrong. This is where you want to do it. So let's rename it. Let's call it um, Office Cough Bulb. Okay, now it has a decent name. One device and two entities. So let's see what's next for our color. So the card with information about the cough bulb will indicate the bulb has one device and two entities. And then you can click the one device, then click the device listed on the next page. So if you go back, and we click on this and then click on one device, click on that page. This is where we started from a minute ago, where I called it this. And by the way, if I'm saying cough wrong, I'm sorry. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but I'm saying it the way I think it should be pronounced. Okay, so we've got it all renamed. Everything's nice. So now what we want to do, general usage, again, in our little instruction sheet here. Clicking on the light entity cough bulb anywhere in the Loveless dashboard will cause the pop-up of figure five. So if you look at figure five, figure five is that color wheel. So if I click on this, it says I should get a color wheel. And it doesn't look like exactly like this. So you can see the difference here. In here, we have this color wheel. And in the Home Assistant, we have this right here. So we have our brightness. So let's just play with this a minute. You can see on the video here the, what the brightness looks like. Make it a little bit bigger. We'll just bring it down, see if it does what it's supposed to. And it does, it brings the brightness down after you release. So I can turn it off, turn it back on. And when it's on, I have these uh, devices here. I can change the temperature or the color. And here's the color wheel, they do show that. It just ha happens to start on temperature first. So I can change it to out really warm, which you can see, it's really hard to see on the camera but it is changing the color temperature. Very, if you look here, and it's just really hard to see it, but you can see like inside the uh, the lip of the deal, it's colorful or a different color. You can kind of see it a little bit. So that's the bulb temperature. And then you can change the color of the bulb. So again, it's really hard to see, but I'm changing the color and you can see it more 
on, not on the bulb, but actually on the uh, the outside of the deal. The, the casing of the lamp, you can watch the colors there. So you can kind of see it there, change colors. So there I have all my different colors going on here. And let's see if there's anything uh, specific here. Clicking color displays the color wheel. Uh, the RGB color will be converted to RGBW by the Koff Smart Bulb. The white channel will be set to the lowest common value of the RGB channels. And the RGB channels will each be reduced by the, the same amount. So the white channel will be distributed between the cold and warm white LEDs based on the most recent color temperature. So it has a color LED and a, and a temperature LED. Uh, so clicking temperature will replace the color wheel with a color temperature. Modifying color temperature will cause the RGB, uh, let's see. Modifying color temperature will cause the RGB color to reset to white. Okay, so now I come back over here, it puts it on white. So if you change the temperature over here, it changes the color to uh, white and you have to go back over here and change it. All right, what else do we need to know? Uh, some pro tips, it says here, ESP Home can have issues if your network changes the IP address of the Cough smart bulb. So we recommend that you actually set the, the, the a set of static IP address in your router. Even if you're using DHCP, tell it to always use the same IP address so that ESP Home knows where this stuff is. Uh, what else here? If the IP address of your cough, cough bulb smart, a smart bulb does change, the bulb will likely show up as unavailable in Home Assistant temporarily. Restarting Home Assistant should cause the bulb to be found at the new IP address. And then you can program or reprogram the cough bulb in the ESP Home dashboard using the template YAML file downloaded at, uh, and it gives an address in here. So you can flash a different firmware it allows firmware to re be reprogrammed by uploading a bin file or a bin GZ file. Um, any ESP8266 firmware, compatible firmware can be used. Uh, make sure that the firmware you select allows for over the air updates. If you don't do this, you may brick the light bulb and then you'll have to open it up and solder on or do whatever to reflash it. And then of course, Tasmoda, the flash memory uh, has enough free space to flash the full default Tasmoda firmware on it, uh, as long as you use GZIP. Do not flash the cough smart bulb with Tasmoda mini minimal or Tasmoda min any of the Tasmoda minimals. Uh, the minimal version does not include captive portal, and that is required to connect the bulb to your Wi-Fi network. If you go straight from the ESP home base firmware to Tasmoda minimal, your bulb will be bricked. Uh, again, you'd have to take it apart and reflash it if you do that. And then, of course, it gives you the ESP pin out on this little paper that comes with it. So if you want to do some other stuff with it or flash it, then it tells you how to do it. Okay, so now I want to be able to use this in an automation. But first, before I do that, since I don't know, uh, I haven't played with RGBW, I want to do a little bit of playing around in my developer tools section. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go over to services. And I'm going to go to UI mode so I can see what I'm doing here in the user interface. And I'm going to call a service called light turn on. My target is going to be my new bulb. And I'm going to start playing around with some of these values to see what they do. So color name, I'm just going to call this all white. We're going to start with an all white bulb. And all of the rest of this, I'm going to leave alone. I'm going to I'm going to give the color, actually, I'm going to give the color temperature a little bit warmer. So we'll make it about 3,900 for that. Actually, let's make it about 3,000. Because less is warmer, more is brighter or whiter. Is that right? Yep. And brightness, we're going to set to 50%. There you go. No brightness step value, no brightness step. Uh, this sets the light to white mode and changes its brightness where zero turns the light off. One is the minimum brightness and 255 is the maximum. Uh, I suppose I could just set this to this one value, but let's leave it the way it is now. And let's go ahead and call the service and see what the light does. So let's go over here to our camera. 
And let's see what happens with the bulb. It's currently blue. You can kind of see down here that this is the blue there. Let's call the service. Two or more values in the same group of exclusion. Okay, so I have two or more values in the same group. So I can't do brightness and color temperature, I guess. Or color name. So let's get rid of color name. Let's see if that does it. And there we go. So I can't. I can actually call the color name. So if I say color temperature, and that's because you remember when we were setting this up, if you change the color uh, temperature uh, or the color, if you change the temperature, it sets the color back to white. So let's just call brightness and then we'll just call a color, a human color name. We have some choices here. So let's go with, let's go with blue and see what that looks like. I think you missed some of that. So what I did was I took off the color. I got rid of the color temperature here and I just selected white up here a minute ago and that's what made it work. So I'm gonna select blue now and I'm gonna call the service. And now you can see that the light, you kind of see it, the light is blue. Um, it's, hard, it's hard to see this on the light, on my auto correcting camera, but it is blue. Uh, so there it is, it's blue. And maybe you can even see it off of this. So we can go back over here and we can just change it to some other color. So if you just want to change the color directly to some, some color, uh, you can do that here by selecting the color. And then I'm going to call the service and see what it does. And it gives you like a cornflower looking color. Uh, you can see that color here on the lamp. Um, you do have the option of doing it that way. And you can call an automation to do this stuff as well. You can go very specific on the RGB color, the RGBW color, the RGBWW color. If you want to use a color temperature for the light, you can either use Kelvin or Mi Reds, My Reds. But if I change the color temperature here, and let's say I want to make it about like that, 3500, and I call the service, it's going to change the color temperature to what I set it here, but it won't change the color anymore. You can't have the color and the color temperature, because it sets it to white when you change the temperature. If I bring the temperature back over here to 2300 and call it, it becomes softer and uh, more, uh, more comforting. And then if you go all the way over here to 6500, it's gonna be kind of a stark white. Again, you can't really see that on the camera, but it is changing those different colors. So now we know that we can just pick a color here Let's get rid of color temperature. We'll just pick a color from our human readable color names. And I will change it to, I don't even know what all these colors are. Let's go with um, a nice cayenne, cyan. And you can see the cyan here. So we can change the colors to what we want. We can change the brightness to full brightness if we want to do that as well. And then it gets super bright. Or we can come down to less bright and it gets a lot less bright. So now I want to use this in, auto, in an automation. I want the automation to be part of my workday setup where I turn on all of the uh, work stuff that I need when I'm in my office, and then I turn off all the lights, lock the doors, set everything the way it should be so that I'm just in a work mode here. And for that, I'll go over to my production Home Assistant instance where I have this workday setup already going. So workday, and I'm doing this in my uh, workday setup automation. And you can see already here that I have the trigger can be either I have a button to push on the dashboard or I have a, a key on one of my light switches that will do this. But I have a bunch of services that run. And all we have to do is add another action. And that action is going to be light turn on or call service. And the service is going to be light turn on. And we'll pick an entity. And here's my cough bulb. So we talked about before, we're doing the, the um, we're just going to do a color name. So I'll pick a color name here and I will ch choose, um, I don't know, let's do coral this time. And then I'm going to do a brightness of about, uh, actually brightness here of about 50 or 60%. So we're up to about 60%. And then I'll leave everything else the same. I don't need to change anything else. I can save this. Now, when I call the actions for this particular uh, workday setup, it should change that light. So let me go to K2 
camera. And so you can watch this light here. You can watch the light and I'm going to run. Here we go. Let's do this. I'm going to run these actions right here and then you can watch the light change. And it's going to change the locks and do a bunch of other things and do this one at the last. It also makes an announcement on my smart, smart speaker. And there you go. You see that it changed to a crimson or whatever coral color. And now as part of my workday setup, I will have this light turn on to whatever color, in this case, coral, that I need it to run in. So one final step I want to do is just, uh, let's go to a dashboard. We'll come over here to our developer site, our Raspberry Pi 4. And I can go into configuration and back into integrations, look for this card, this cough bulb, go to the device, click the device. And now you notice I have entities here that say add to Loveless. So if I click on add to Loveless, it will first ask me where I want to put it, which dashboard. I'll put it in default and I'll put it under home. And there's my cough bulb switch. So add to Loveless UI. And this is by, by no means the only card that you can use with this, but this is the default card. And if you click this, these three dots over here, you can do all this stuff directly from the dashboard. Now, if I go to, um, let's see, I wanna show you this now. If I change this slider or whatever it's called, you'll notice that the bulb is actually getting brighter or dimmer. And the color of this should reflect what we have it set to here. So if I go with a blue bulb, you can now see that I've chosen blue. And this is the color that the card will be reflective of. And then I can come around and dim or, or um, brighten that light bulb. So it's super simple to do that. There's probably a lot of other cards out there that you can use with your RGBW stuff. But this is one of them, or the default one in Loveless. So the cough bulb is super simple to set up in Home Assistant. It is built on ESP Home. It is designed for Home Assistant. And you can take it and use it in your automations. You can control it directly from your dashboards. All kinds of stuff you can do with it. It was easy to set up, as you saw. You just plug it in, configure the Wi-Fi, and all the instructions are in the handy little instruction manual that you get with it, step by step. So you can go through those real simple. And then once you have it up and running, you just set it the way you want it and use it. Uh, the, the only thing I, I noticed, like I mentioned before, is the bulb is just super, uh, it's huge. I mean, look how far it sticks out from the, the uh, edge of this lamp. But this, this may be a lamp that's designed for a smaller bulb. So you got to make sure if you're going to put this in a lamp that you put it in a lamp that is big enough for it or put it in a fixture or something else. It probably works fine in one of those uh, recess fixtures. fixtures. Um, so the, the jury's out on the longevity of the bulb. I've had quite a few LED bulbs that are just off the shelf LED bulbs uh, that are using different things, not smart ones. They just go bad after a lot less time than they should. So hopefully this bulb will last a while. The pricing of the bulb as of this video is about $15 US off of one of the big box retailers. So it's not an inexpensive bulb, but it is a, a uh, comparably priced bulb with other LED smart bulbs. But the biggest thing is it plugs right into Home Assistant. Anyway, I, I'm really uh, impressed with it so far. It's super easy to use, super easy to set up, and I'm, I'm uh, looking forward to putting it in my arsenal of lighting that I use when I'm working here in my office. So if you have any questions, drop those down in, in the comments below. Uh, again, I'm on Discord if you're not a channel member. Well, first of all, if you are a channel mem member, thank you so much for being a channel member. That really helps support uh, this channel, helps me to buy stuff like this that I can continue to show off. And if you're not a channel member, hit that button down below, that join button, and uh, show your support for the channel. And uh, we will see you on the next video.